This video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Look, you knew I wasn't going to do a rundown of regular phones, and while I would have loved to do a best foldables list, not every video can be about folding phones, sadly. So to close out 2021, what do you say we get weird? Flip phone? So what? Durable flip phone? Seen it. Durable flip phone that bears the brand of heavy industrial machinery and also runs Android? <laughs> okay, now you got my attention. It's not just that the S22 Flip is one of the first cat phones to come stateside, it's that it's one of the only phones that doesn't make you sacrifice smarts for simplicity. Bullet Group, which builds phones under the CAT license, crammed in a ton of tactility here when it's time to tap out texts. But that 2.8-inch display is also a touchscreen. And instead of your typical dumb phone OS, it's running Android Go, Google's stripped-down version of Android 11 for phones with lower-end specs. That means you still get Google applications, like Maps. You can still sync all your Google accounts. And you still get the Play Store so you can load up on most of the apps you're likely to need on the go. I get it, this phone isn't meant to stand in for a smartphone, it's built for the job site. But as cool as digital detoxers make it seem to just unplug, man. It can also be debilitating if you can't get things done, like, I don't know, call an Uber. The S22 Flip lets you do that, or ask Google Assistant a quick question, or even fire up a 4G hotspot to connect a tablet or laptop. Now, it doesn't do any of those things particularly quickly, and the lack of a fingerprint sensor is a bummer, but for 234 bucks, I think it's the smartest dumb phone around. If I didn't need a quality camera so badly, I might even consider using it to disconnect during the holiday break, but yeah, then again, I already have a flip phone. You know what I also have? A smartwatch. Gives me a second screen on my wrist so I don't have to pick up my phone to check every notification. But what if someone bolted my smartwatch right to my smartphone? Yep, leave it to Unihertz to make something like this. These are the same folks behind some of the world's tiniest Android phones and some of the last to offer physical keyboards. And now, like so many young people today, they're turning to TikTok. Uh, no, add a couple C's there. There we go. Yeah, the TikTok is, uh, it's ridiculous. It's, it's too big, even considering its 6.3 inch display, too heavy, even given its 6,000 milliamp hour battery. I mean, on the bright side, it's got the same IP68 dust and water resistance as the cat phone, nearly as many buttons, and the full fat version of Android 11. But the reason the TikTok exists is this. It's literally a smartwatch display with, with the exact same size and resolution as something like the TicWatch E3. And you can use it in many of the same ways. Preview notifications, frame up your 48 megapixel selfies, control your music, or build some custom watch faces so you can while away while someone counts the minutes. The only question left is <laughs> why? Well, Unihertz tries to answer that question on its Kickstarter page for this product. The company says it offers more diverse choices in smartphones because it believes that everyone deserves to have different choices. In other words, it makes phones that are different for the sake of being different. And you know what? Even if I personally would never find a use for it, at about 300 bucks, plus or minus a Jackson, I'm still glad that TikTok exists for somebody who does like this kind of thing. Now, number three is actually something you've seen before, but I wanted to give it an honorable mention because of the improvements it's made since launch. When I reviewed the Surface Duo 2 back in October, I found that Microsoft had yet to correct many of the problems that doomed the Duo 1. Software lag, unfinished features, random bugs, poor cameras, and worst of all, a touch response issue that made fast typing incredibly uncomfortable. That led to my Duo 2 gathering dust in a drawer until December, when Microsoft released a large software update that finally addressed some of those issues. 
The Duo 2 really is faster than before, and some of those annoying bugs really do seem to be squashed. Mr. Mobile, of course you can have the white one, but you know, it's gonna cost you like three of your cell phones, so hit me up. I don't mind that jungle breeze. The button on the pen now does something. You can draw in emails, as promised back in October, and should you want to type those replies instead, your keyboard is a lot more likely to keep up with you now. Look, I won't sugarcoat it, the cameras still aren't very good, and the phone is still more prone to odd behavior than it should be for $1,500. But at least now, it behaves well enough that I'm not constantly being distracted from Microsoft's vision for a dual-screen device. A foldable, but not. Heck, a smartphone, but not. One more update like that, a little more camera tuning, and by the time this thing comes down to a thousand bucks, I might actually be ready to recommend it. All that takes us to the final boss in our weird phones fight, a device I'll blow the lid off of right after this. $663. That's how much I've saved on food this year, thanks to HelloFresh. And that's not counting the free meals I get because they're my sponsor. You see, I pay for HelloFresh, and I'm happy to do it, because it also saved me 20 hours that I'd have spent at the grocery store in 2021. Of course, none of that matters if the food they send to your door doesn't taste good. Well, HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, and in the past 12 months, it's given me everything from classic steak and potatoes and burgers, to calorie-smart fish and chicken, to some of the best soup I've ever had. Mm actual reaction. And thanks to idiot-proof instructions and perfectly portioned ingredients, I made every meal myself, usually in about 40 minutes. But the best thing about HelloFresh is how adaptable it is. Not only can you skip a week or add a meal whenever you want, you can also add extras like a cheese and charcuterie board for those holiday parties, oatmeal and lattes for those rushed mornings, or ready-to-bake focaccia pizza when you're really in a time crunch at dinner. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code MrMobile14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use code MrMobile14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. As always, thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. When Qualcomm loaned me this Lights Phone 1 at the Snapdragon Summit earlier this month, I wasn't sure that I'd review it. I mean, the whole reason I was at the summit was to cover Qualcomm's new Snapdragon chipset, which will replace the older one that powers this phone. Add to that, the phone I filmed the summit with was the Sony Xperia Pro-i, whose main camera sensor is a generation newer than the one fitted here. A day late, a buck short, I thought I would report nothing, because it was just too dated. But then I got to actually using the thing. And this is one of those devices you really have to use to understand. The Lights Phone 1 takes its name from the founder of Leica Camera, whose brand graces the back corner and also the lens cap of this delightful anomaly. Yeah, you heard right, it's an honest to Ernst metal lens cover, the removal of which takes some getting used to when you're out and about. Though it also has a tendency to stick to metal tables, so keep an eye out for that. Now, if that sounds needlessly anachronistic, another thing to keep track of, another thing to lose, yeah, it's all of those things. But it's also exactly the kind of affectation a phone like this calls for. Together with the textured silver chassis and matte black back, the only way this thing could look any more like a camera is if that back plate was covered in leather instead of Gorilla Glass, or if it had a shutter button instead of the dedicated Google Assistant button that's actually here. Strange choices. Power it up, uninstall the metric megaton of bloatware that took me four minutes just to disable, and you'll actually find some pretty cool stuff. The gallery widget on the home screen showcases photographs shot on Leica cameras. Normally don't like this kind of thing, but this is really well done, and the photos are, of course, gorgeous. The display is also gorgeous, delivering beautiful liquid blacks and deeply saturated colors at a refresh rate that peaks at 240 hertz. The ultrasonic fingerprint sensor beneath the screen is huge and can be programmed, if you want, to unlock only upon recognizing two simultaneous authorized thumbprints. 
And there are some useful features I haven't seen before, like the mode that'll automatically scroll a feed for you. It's a potent package. It's all, almost enough to forgive the total lack of palm rejection on the screen's curved sides, which is a real usability pain. And finally, it's all built around a camera that takes the single one-inch sensor from the Sharp Aquos R6 and layers on some Leica processing that takes the color out if you like and leaves it in if you don't. Now, this isn't a review. I've only used this thing for like a day, and so I can't speak to longer-term testing like battery life or really give any buying advice on this $1,700 phone that you still have to import from Japan. But I, I found an old interview with Ryan Johnson uh, where he said that Leica is a really specific thing in that it's an object that lends itself to being fetishized. And I, well, while I haven't owned a Leica camera, having used this, even just for that one day, I get it. And I really want to review it. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a full review of the Lights Phone 1, and if I can find a suitable destination for a road trip review to fill the gaping hole in my schedule left by my canceled CES plans, I'll try to make that happen for you. This video was made possible by review samples from Microsoft, Unihertz, Cat, and Qualcomm. But as always, no manufacturer had any editorial input, copy approval, or an early preview of this video, and no one besides my sponsor HelloFresh provided compensation for its production. Until next time, I've been Michael Fisher. Thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.